what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here this is going to be my review for halloween 5 halloween 5 was released in 1989 halloween 5 was rushed into production after the success or the moderate success that halloween 4 received the year prior this movie literally came out a year after halloween 4 now that's not to say that this couldn't have turned out good because Scream, Scream 2 did the same thing. Scream came out in 1996 and Scream 2 came out the next year after. Uh, the problem with this movie is the fact that it seems very rushed. And again, there's, there's that lack of consistency as far as the creative team is concerned. We do not have the same writers that were brought on for Halloween 4. Uh, we have the same cast for the most part. We have Donald Pleasance back as the wonderful Dr. Loomis. We have Daniel Harris as Jamie Lloyd again. Ellie Cornell returns as Rachel. Um, Sheriff Meeker, he, the person who plays him, Boo Star, I believe that's his name. He returns in this movie. And Michael Myers this time around is played by Don Shanks. The movie is taking place a year after what happened at the end of Halloween 4. I didn't discuss this in my Halloween 4 review, but at the end of Halloween 4, Jamie uh Jamie is seen stabbing her her foster mother. She stabs her foster mother and it's, the movie ends in a way in a very unique way that this film fails to capitalize on. It ends with Jamie Lloyd seeing it seems that she's going to take up the mantle left behind by her uncle. Now, while that would have been a better narrative to explore, it still wouldn't have made a lot of sense in the end because there still would have been a bunch of question marks left from it. But still, at the end of the day, if they would have picked up from where that film left off and let's say, see, because how Halloween 5 should have been done, in my opinion, is it should have we should have capitalized on the way Halloween 4 ended and it should have taken place at Smith's Grove. Jamie Lloyd should have been there as a patient similar to how her uncle was. And then I would say bodies start to fall one by one around the hospital and they think it's jamie and then in the end we find out that it's michael myers who was alive or something something of that effect i think that's how it should have been done i think that would have been much better it would have made a lot more sense but at the same time there still would have been questions regarding that premise alone um but in this film they don't capitalize on it she's rendered a mute she can't speak for some reason and she has this weird connection with her uncle where she can tell what he's about to do and she's having visions in her head of what of, of the victims that he is about to attack and it's never really explained why this is going on this is where we're introduced to the man in black as well he plays a major factor in the ending of this film we also get one of our worst characters in this series in this film uh played by wendy foxworth or i think her name on she's credited as wendy kaplan tina she is one of the most annoying characters to watch on screen and this film does a, does a bad job at actually make she she offers nothing to the overall end game of the film. So the fact that this whole narrative spends the most time with her and her idiot group of friends is rather frustrating because none of them matter in the end to the whole grand scheme of things. Whereas opposed to this year's Halloween 2018, at least Allison was connected to Lori Strode. She had some sort of connection to what was going on she was a part of the bigger picture tina and her friends they are here just for this just for the sake of being here and the film kills off rachel's character earlier in the film as if she is no big deal so a character that fans are invested in from the previous film gets shafted and gets killed off instantly like she's literally she gets like up to 20 minutes of screen time in this movie if i'm not mistaken she's just one of the first early kills in the movie and that's what really in my opinion when i first viewed this movie that's what set me down because it's like well why would you do that and then especially why would you do that and then pick it up with a character like tina tina takes nothing seriously she's like overly overly bubbly she's too bubbly in my opinion the character is very comical in a way nothing nothing is to be taken serious by her and she does not come across as a successful final girl she's not even the final girl in the movie she she is just there as some sort of hurdle in the path of the ultimate final shot we get with jamie and michael so the existence of tina in the film doesn't really even make sense is that it's as if she's here for no other reason than to just piss off the audience um 
as far as like again going back to the creative team nothing in the movie makes any sense while everyone in this movie does an amazing job with their acting donald pleasance gives another amazing performance it's just very frustrating to sit down and look at a movie that has so many gaping plot holes as far as the narrative is concerned they introduce plot devices that they had no intention of making any reason of as the series progressed because the filmmakers that were involved in this i believe they are on record in certain documentaries and certain articles saying that they just brought in things just for the sake of bringing them in with no real intent of where the ultimate end game would be for them the only interesting thing in the movie is donald pleasance jamie jamie lloyd uh daniel harris again she gives an amazing performance at such a young age she is absolutely incredible in the film even though the, sh the stuff she's given to work with is absolute garbage uh, the myers house let's talk about the myers house the Myers house looks like complete crap. I don't know what that house was, but that is not the Myers house. I do not know why it looks like that. I don't know why they didn't choose a different house. I'm assuming they, that's the best they could come up with, but if that's the best you can come up with with the Myers house, then you weren't looking that hard and you probably weren't even trying to do that well of a job because that house does not look anything like the Myers house. It's terrible. Uh, the Michael Myers mask in this movie is absolute crap. I don't know what is going on in this movie. There is just a lot of BS. The mask is crap. Uh, the narrative is crap. The main focal characters that we get introduced to in the movie, they are crap as well. Tina and her bimbo idiot group of friends, we are spend the most time in the movie with them, so I do not know why that is. And then we also have this narrative with the connection between Jamie and Michael that never gets explained. We do not know why she was left mute. We don't know why Michael somehow has control over her. I don't even think it's made apparent if Michael even knows he has control over her. Or It's just, just very odd. It's like a complete, it's like someone was writing and they just got lost in their own creativeness to the point where they didn't even consider trying to make any sense out of it. They just came up with a bunch of plot devices and just threw them on screen and put Halloween 5 on the title and just put Michael Myers in it at the last minute. That's what this movie comes across as. I do not know why Rachel was killed off so early. The movie would have been much better if we would have just tackled Ra the dynamic between Rachel and Jamie again. Tina didn't even give a crap about Jamie. Tina wanted to get drunk and go have sex with her boyfriend and a whole bunch of other idiots at this Halloween party that, again, nothing nothing makes sense as far as why she exists. She exists for no reason. Uh, the man in black, he it gets all worse. This gets worse as the film progresses, by the way. And we have one of the worst shots we see of Michael Myers in the film at the very end when he's just fiddling with his hands behind behind bars like he's just some regular person when the entire time in the movie we were led to believe that he is not like us so it's very frustrating to sit down and see a character who's supposed to be the quote-unquote boogeyman just sitting there fiddling with his hands as it as if he's been defeated in some twisted sick way it just looks very humanizing Michael Myers is not meant to be humanized. Why would you humanize someone who is illustrated at surviving all this other stuff? I mean, yes, he's a human and he's subject to these types of these types of punishments, but the audience doesn't need to see him looking like that. In this manner, I don't think the audience needs to see him like that. It makes the character look very weak. Again, the house was crap. The Myers house was crap. The characters in here are pointless. Uh, the care the acting was fine. No one really gave a bad job as far as like the acting was concerned in my opinion It's just enough the people seem to just exist for no reason There's a bunch of people here that ultimately exist for no reason And we don't spend enough time with Jamie Lloyd's character. That's me personally I don't think we spend enough time with her. She's like an afterthought and the film wants to focus on Tina in this danger surrounding Tina with Michael Myers and at this point, I think anyone with a functioning brain was cheering in their seats in the theater when they saw Michael kill Tina. She is the worst character that I have ever seen, at, like, at least in the top five. She's in the top five for worst characters in this series. I do not know why this character was written into the film. I do not know why Rachel was X'd out so that we could focus on her idiot friend and her other idiot friends because they're all idiots. They have nothing to do with the overall end game. They offer nothing to the overall narrative. Um, 
and then just I don't I don't know what was going on with that mask. That mask was absolutely terrible. I I don't even want to talk about this movie anymore, guys. Um, that's my review of Halloween Five: The Revenge of Michael Myers. The only interesting thing was the ending of the movie. I thought the shootout scene was very cool. That's just something small. That doesn't even give this movie a pass. Uh, the acting was fine. I think the person who directed this, I'm not even going to bother looking that up. I think they did, it was decent. They could have, it wasn't the best direction I've seen. Certain shots could have been done certain ways that would have made it much more effective in my opinion. Uh, the revamp of John Carpenter's score again, that was a bit so-so. Cinematography as far as that concerned and Michael Myers kills, I thought that was fine. And like I said, the acting and what the characters were acting as, I think they did a fine job with the crap they were given to work with. But aside from that, I would honestly give Halloween 5 a 5 and a half out of 10. 5 and a half out of 10. And I would say this is probably one of the worst entries in the series. But let me know what you guys think about Halloween 5, the Revenge of Michael Myers, down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed my video, give this a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know what movies you would like me to review in the future. Also, in the description, I'll have links to my articles that I've been publishing. Again, there's news on the future of the Halloween series with David Gordon Green. I have news on the Chucky TV series and Jeepers Creepers 4. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you for the next movie review.